All right, guys, let's talk about how to place down objects in web AR. All right, so to get started in web AR, where we need to go is to GitHub, and we want to go to the immersive web uh, GitHub repo. In here, they've got some awesome repositories in here. Uh, the best one to look at though is the WebXR samples. This basically gives you a whole bunch of different examples of what you can actually do with WebAR and gives you the actual practical files to do it yourself if you wanted to. They've got an example here though, which we can head to. I'm going to head to on my browser here, but it's not going to work perfectly because I obviously I'm not connected to a phone right now. And in here, they have all these different options to go through. Uh, one that's pretty cool, which I'll show you in a sec, is the hit test, and this is actually anchoring based off your web device, uh, off your off your device, and placing objects down on the ground. It, it's actually quite remarkable. They can do it from web, and let's go through and actually do that in practice now. Okay, so we're on the hit test page, and on here we're going to go up and go and actually try this out. But this is basically the page that we hit to start AR. So let's hit that up, loads our screen, takes a moment, but it'll eventually show us this marker. And from here, if we click on the area, basically it puts the item down on the area. So we can see here it also detects vertical. It's definitely not perfect, but we can hit here and we can get the sunflower. And basically we can place as many down as we want and you fill up your whole screen. It gets pretty crazy, but um, it's still pretty cool. But let's go over here, let's chuck another one down. And Anyway, it's pretty cool. You can sort of go through, you can go inside it and check it out. So going into the files specifically, I tried to then basically take what they had as a framework and moved it into how can I actually bring in my own object that I want to place down. And as easy as that may sound, it's it's actually not. So if I use the hit test as the example here, we can go into the media section here and we can go to the GLTF files. And we can see in here, there's a bunch of GLTF uh, folders and these each relate to effectively the object that you're placing down or the objects used in the actual scenes. Because if you go through and have a look at the other ones, you'll see um, a bunch of these other assets being used. But in our case, it was a sunflower being sunflower being put down. And in here we can see there's a couple of different files. There's a, a PNG file, a blend file, a GLTF, and a bin file. I tried just straight up replacing the blend file, and unfortunately that doesn't seem to work. And, and what I believe is the case is that they're using this GLTF file to effectively render out uh, the actual object to the screen at a really small amount of size. Because if you see here, even the sunflower.blend file is only 476 kilobytes. I tried downloading a few different assets online and I was getting about, I don't know, 20 megabytes. And even that was struggling just to upload. But what we need to do is effectively turn our blend files into GLTF files. So I went around for quite a while trying to figure out how exactly to convert a blend file to a GLTF file. There is actually a uh, GitHub repo. This one is specifically OBJ to GLTF file, but there are a few uh, GitHub repos out there that are actually specifically for pulling down uh, an, an OBJ file or a blend file or many different files to be honest, and turning them into GLTF file format. Now, there are websites as well that will do it, the OBJ to GLTF file, and this may very well work, but when I take this conversion, put it into the app, nothing happens. Nothing happens from what I could see. So, I've tried other aspects. I looked at uh, something like Sketchfab. Sketchfab actually uh, allow you to download assets and it automatically converts it to a GLTF file for you. And this kind of worked, but not really worked. So, let me, let me take you through the challenges that I ran into when doing this. So in the original assets file here in the actual project that we downloaded from GitHub, we have here uh, a sunflower.bin and a sunflower.gltf file. These files came with the, uh, with the Sketchfab file. So if I quickly copy and paste all the files from Sketchfab in, you can see here that we have a scene.bin, a scene.gltf, and some textures. 
Looking at these then in Sublime, or looking at the GLTF file specifically in Sublime, uh, if I open this one up, we can see in here uh, a bunch of different things, a bunch of vertices. But if we go to the word color, we can then see references to the textures and also reference to the scene.bin in this uh, file itself. And so make sure firstly that you update these references because I ran into issues here. Uh, so I changed this to Sunflower because I didn't know what uh, internal references this was referring to. And I also got rid of the textures forward slash and just upload this file, the dot bin, and move the textures outside of the file into this specific URL. And let me show you what I got. Okay, so we're back here at the hit test page. Let's hit start AR again. Again, loads up, loads up the marker position. We hit click and we get a little shadow. And if we click lots and lots of times, the shadow is there. There is something definitely being placed down there, but I don't know where it is. If I look upwards into the sky, I, I don't know if it loses tracking or if it has nothing up in the sky, I don't know. But it is 100% trying to place something down Oh, in fact, you can see it sort of lose its shadow. But yeah, it's 100% trying to place something down, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> so I'm sure there's something to do with in the settings that will fix this. Something about the matrix, the vertices. But honestly, I don't know. I don't know enough about these files to be able to debug it entirely. But it's 100% trying to place something down. Okay, one thing I noticed when I was partially giving up on trying to get something to actually place down is that the original asset of the Sunflower actually came from Google Poly, which kind of makes sense because, you know, that's sort of who built that original uh, web immersive example. So what I've tried is I've gone to Google Poly and I've actually downloaded, uh, so in the Google Poly site, you can actually download assets. And one of the options here uh, is to download as a GL GLTF file and we can download this and we get the same sort of file format as before where we get a bin file and also a the actual file itself. I've uploaded these, let me show you how this went. All right, same deal. We're on the hit test again and hit start AR. Uh, we're looking around, looking to detect ground. There's our marker. Uh, I click place down. Uh, whoa. <laughs> what? What's going on? <laughs> that that coffee cup must be gigantic. Uh, let let me try and move backwards here. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving backwards. Still moving backwards. Whoa! Yeah, that is uh, <laughs> that's pretty huge. Um. I'm sure there's a way to scale this down, but I'm not 100% off the top of my head. So, well, we got a different asset coming out at least finally, but honestly, this is probably at the stretch of my limits. I'm sure there's many of you out there that know what to do, but this at least shows you that you can replace the asset with your own and put it into a web AR space. <laughs> And so that's it guys, we're going to call it there. Look, I don't know all the intricacies to GLTF files and web AR and all the little bits and pieces, but I did get you there. We got from placing down a random object at the start to placing down one that we found online. So look at the online converters, look at, look at the GitHub repos for all the converters. I guarantee you'll find an answer. If you have any queries, please put them down in the comments. I'll do my best to try and answer. Until next guys, see ya.